happily quote this, the universe has actually made of stories and not atoms. And if, <laughs> if I was in an engineering university, I, I would have really grump faces around here. Uh, why do we say this? I and mean, everything, whether it's science, whether it's art, whether it's uh, people, everything boils down to stories. Everything boils down to uh, experiences. Everything boils down to who you are and what you do. Uh, not a, in a, in a, let's talk about religion for a matter of fact. Uh, not in the sense of faith, not in the sense of God, but in the sense that, uh, uh, what is it about religion that makes us, uh, that touches our hearts, that makes us uh, create an, creates an identity for us? What is it? Can you, anybody shout out an answer? Anybody? Uh, religion is actually the greatest story that you can hear, right? It's, it's an incredible story. Whether it's true or false, it's secondary. We are not about to discuss that, but it's about, uh, it's a great story. Like, I've always been curious about it. I'm not religious, but I'm incredibly curious about religion. Um, it, it uses multi-sensory experience of storytelling. Whether it's, it's audio, it's visual, there's art, to, there's art to consume, there's songs to be sung, there's music to hear. It really creates an entire full-fledged multimedia experience. And that's where it touches hearts. That's why it's so timeless, right? It's like most of the stories we hear of religion thousands of years ago, why do we still follow it in spite of not having any relation to anybody in that generation whatsoever? In that... In that, in that note, uh, I would like to say uh, there are many motivators for us to do things. There's guilt, there's fear, there's hate, anger, and many other negative things. But uh, they can make you do incredible things. They, there's like, if, you, if you look at most of the world conquerors, they were driven by a lot of greed, hate, whatsoever, right? But they all achieved a lot. We, we talk about Alexander the Great. We call him the great person. But you know, uh, we can always debate that about world conquerors and what about the bloodshed, right? We can always ask these questions. But there's only one thing that can really uh, make you do fulfilling things. No, 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 really, no points to guess, but it's love. It's not, uh, it's not about uh, love for your girlfriend or your boyfriend or anything like that. I mean, that can make you do incredible things as well. But <laughs> love for what you do, love for uh, something that you truly connect to, love for something that uh, moves your soul. You know, moves, but makes you do what you want to do. And for me, I love two things. I love people, and I love their stories. It's, uh, I would spend the rest of my life doing this, and I would create, uh, I love creating my story out of other stories, and being involved in their story gives me incredible amount of um, love, incredible amount of uh, happiness to do that. And I believe this chart kind of, vaguely shows, I, I, I did it at 2 in the morning, so don't blame me for what it looks like. So it's, I believe that every story has a beginning, middle, and not necessarily an end to it, right? Especially to a great story. It has a beginning, it has a middle, and not necessarily an end. Uh, and most of us, most of us creative people, as we identify as storytellers, as artists, photographers, we operate in this space of the middle ground, right? Which, which really takes a story and makes it great, right? There's that tipping point that takes something that was ordinary and makes it greater. A great story never ends. I truly believe in this. If, if a story is great enough, it'll never end. Going back to religion, going back to our freedom fighters, going back to anybody that you can still remember who are more than 100 years old, right? Great stories. Whether it's bad or good, they're great stories, but they never end. They merely transform. They merely transform into different ways, in different kind of uh, forms and formats and lives, and it inspires different people to create different kind of stories, different kind of greater stories in multiple parallels. Um, Coming to that, I would like to take you through three examples of how stories become greater. A great story can become greater. So just before I start, I would like to um, make you understand the difference between story and storytelling. Story is already great. If it's, a, if it's a great story, it can do well by itself, right? But now, how is it that somebody like a storyteller, like, you know, if, if I'm anything, I would like to be called a storyteller. How do we um, take a great story and tell it even more greatly so that people like us connect to it, people like us uh, feel connected to it and 
kind of take inspiring action towards that. These guys, uh, they're, they're called the Halakis, Halaki Wakaligas. They're a tribal community not too far from Bangalore. Just an overnight journey bus to uh, Ankola. It's in northern, northern Karnataka. They're an incredibly beautiful, beautiful tribe. As you can see, the kind of, can I get the lights a little dim, please? Yeah, fantastic. You can, you can see the way they dress, dress the, the necklaces they wear every day. They're, they're a very uh, halaki, literally in Kannada means halu means milk and aki means rice. They're literally the milk rice clan, right? Now, they, uh, they're farmers, they are hardworking people, and more than all of it, they're incredible poets. Oral poets, they, they sing about everything that you can and cannot ima imagine. If you're talking to them, they literally just start talking about your, uh, singing about your hair, and you'll, you'll have to wait for five minutes before they finish about it, right? Uh, so, it's, it's, so we spent a week's time. Uh, as my, the previous speaker rightly mentioned, it, you're not going to get any of the great stories by three hours or four hours of spending. You'll have to spend a lot of time with them, become friends, and become, become closer, become their family, become part of their story, so that they open up. So we spent a week um, with, this, uh, with these women. They're the last of the singing halakis. Uh, four of them uh, who are really fighting to keep the uh, singing alive. And this woman, Sukriya Ji, she is actually the leader as such. And I would like to make you hear a small little song from that. <laughs> It's, that's basically, they're singing about uh, uh, a puja that they do in the morning. It's a very simple thing. And I asked them a question, uh, why do you wear these necklaces? They're incredibly heavy. And it was a very naive question from my side, a city boy asking a tribal, uh, but why do you do this? You know? she, uh, she answered, like, I'm like, what is the special occasion that you wear this? And the answer I got was, isn't farming, isn't agriculture a good enough occasion for you to dress up? Incredible, like, you know, the kind of stories, the kind of, it's just an insight into your daily life, into looking at your daily life in a different perspective. Uh, so, this was a story that we did, and um, so for this talk, I asked two of my friends to help me out, collaborate, to tell these stories better. So, I called up a friend from Delhi who runs a design studio, I shared the story with him, and asked him to come up with something. What he came up with was a beautiful illustration. A fresco painting. That, uh, that actually is inspired from these women. These women have no idea uh, this painting is done, so it was literally done last night. So uh, I'm actually gonna take a print out and probably send it to them. And uh, these will be available for free. You know, if you guys want it, you can just send me an email. So it, it, something that, was, that happened in a small village, coastal village in Ankola in Karnataka, today it's spread to Delhi, today it's spread, uh, somebody has created an artwork out of it, and this is gonna be in somebody's house, somebody's wallpaper. It becomes a part of their story, and it, be it becomes part of a greater story that people care about. The next story is about a dear friend of mine, Fernando Souza. Uh, he uh, was an ex-TV writer in Spain. He quit his job and decided to travel the world, but in a very interesting way. He said, I don't wanna pay for my transport. He said, I will hitchhike the world, and I will be interesting enough for people to take me with them, not actually pay them for, to take me somewhere, right? So, and along the way, I hosted, he, he, he jumped on cargo ship travelers, he jumped on, he transported owls from one place to other to help out conservationists and whatnot so that he can move from one place to the other. Got punched in the face and broke his jaw in Russia, I mean, Russia, but <laughs> anyway, so he, he did all that, and then um, he, uh, so when he landed, uh, so he was couch surfing with me for 10 days in Bombay, and when I, when I went to pick him up, he literally landed in a lorry with, with a boat that says Bombay, right? And I was like, how are you here? He's like, this guy dropped me from uh, Goa. Uh, so uh, the moment he, he got into the house, he opened up a postcard, and uh, he was writing something, and it was really peculiar for me for somebody to write postcards. I asked him, who are you writing it to? Uh, and he said, to the president of Spain. I, 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 was, I was intrigued. I was like, what are you writing about? He said, he was, his, his postcard literally said, I am at Yashis' house, I just had lunch, and I hope you're doing fine. I, I hope you're doing, doing fine. And he used to write these letters to the president of Spain every week. And asked him why. <laughs> and he said, the president of Spain has the habit of making us feel like he's our friend. You know? So, I'm just telling him what friends tell him. 
So he used to write postcards. Uh, no, I thought, how can I take from this story? And he was a very inspiring guy. And it was his form of rebellion of some sort uh, to kind of drive a point across people. He used to share those postcards out, out on the social media. And they were incredibly, incredibly popular. And people started writing to their presidents and their prime ministers just about how they're doing every day, right? And I thought, what can we do about it? What can TEDx today do about it? So I did the most obvious thing in the morning. Uh, uh, and just when I got in, I, wrote a, I got a postcard and I wrote, this. I wrote it to Mr. Narendra Modi, our Prime Minister. I said, Dear PM, I'm at TEDx SIBM Bangalore. I haven't had breakfast yet. Hope you have. Have a great day. <laughs> now, how about taking it a bit further, right? How about taking it a bit further? I have 10 postcards written, the address to uh, Prime Minister. They are uh, exclusive, they are handwritten postcards from me. <laughs> limited edition, and uh, you have it, so you just distribute it. Why don't you guys write it to Prime Minister? And if you read it, it's called Monkey Bark, by the way. So, <laughs> so uh, I would suggest you guys to post it, and let's see what happens. Let's maybe Mr. Narendra Modi will reply to us. You never know. And maybe he'll say, I just had breakfast, hope you had a good one. <laughs> so nice, and it's not really a form of rebellion, but it's a form of connection. It's a form of making a story interesting. It's a, it's a form of making story more fun. It's a form of making story more uh, personal to you, right? Now, coming to the next story. It's how many of you have heard of Kerala snake boats? Have you seen the big snake boat race? It's in every Incredible India ad, every outwardly Indian advertisement, it's there. Everybody's fed up of it. If you go there, last year I was there uh, uh, for the boat race. It's so commercialized that they have helicopters throwing petals of roses at you for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, we ourselves, it's a very told story. It's a very known story. But we ask ourselves, um, who makes these boats? They're incredible structures, incredibly huge. 128 people row uh, those boats at any given point of time. Who is making them? So we went to the deep depth of Kerala uh, to a place called Champakulam, and we met uh, Sabu, who is the lead carpenter of making these boats. Um, and they're huge. They take a year. They take about a crore rupees to make each boat. It's incredibly expensive. The whole village comes together. It's a very social, democratic act activity. It causes all religion, no matter what they become. It's like a sport. It's like a regional sport for them. Now, the most interesting thing is I was, uh, obviously, I can't speak Malayalam, neither can my photographer. So we were somehow trying to understand what was going on um, with, a, uh, with the old professor who was trying to explain uh, to us about the process. Um, so one of the carpenters, he called us and he said, music, music. And I was intrigued. I'm like, are you going to play music from your radio for me? Or what is it? And then he, did, uh, he, he sat down in front of a nail. On the other side, there was another carpenter who sat down in the end of the nail. They, they beat the nail to a rhythm. It's, the, the concept is that since the boat is like a temple, if I'm beating a nail to the boat, it might as well make music. It was incredible. What I heard, I would like to share with you. Amazing. It's, it's literally a track that you can... I mean, wow. It, when I first heard it, I had, we had not taken any audio device to record. That's a complete recording on my iPhone. Uh, it's, it's of low quality, but whatever, right? It, it's incredible. What a story. And we don't know about it. We, I mean, our, our garment is busy uh, glorifying the race, but this is a story that nobody knows, and it's amazing. I, I, I could dance to it. But then, so uh, what I thought, maybe, maybe I could actually dance to it, right? So I asked a friend who's a DJ and a music producer. I sent him this track and asked him, can you do something about it? And I, asked, I called him two days ago, and he's like, you're horrible for making me do this overnight. But he did something amazing. So it's uh, Chundan. That's the boat, name of the boat. It's called Chundan Vellam, the big snake, big boat. And my friend is Nadir Baluch. Uh, I hope he's OK with me sharing his name on TEDx. But it doesn't matter. And he did this. <laughs> So, 
it's a it's a fantastic mix of something that was recorded on an iPhone in the deep in not really deep. I mean, Kerala is not deep. At all. <laughs> it's it's urban towns everywhere. But incredible that a sound that was made by carpenters in Kerala could be transformed into a, a track that could be played in any, any club, for matter. Uh, so this is available online for free to download. I'll put it up uh, today evening so you can download it tomorrow. A full-fledged track will be coming soon. Uh, that's, that's what storytelling is about. It's about pushing limits. It's about finding new ways to tell stories, to use different senses, to use audio, to use visual, to use uh, touch and feel and smell, to really uh, tell stories in a beautiful way. Uh, don't we all remember our grandmas telling us beautiful stories? What, what made them so special was her, was her face, was her expression, was the way she told us. It's not really the story. They, they, were, they were not that great stories anyway, but it's about the emotion, it's about the connection. And that's what we're trying to bring back with both Untold and Mukha. Uh, not the grandma, but the storytelling part of it. Um, so where do we go from here? Stories, as, as I've shown you, it's stories turn into music, art, they turn into music, they turn, turn into experiences, and in turn, turn in, turns into life. Story is equal to life, and life is equal to story. Right? And I truly believe so. And I would like to end with a very small thought. Right? What is the greatest story, the great big story? Is, is not a story that you don't know yet. It's not a story that you haven't heard of. It's a story of your part of. It's your story. It's the power of one, it's your story that is there to create for you. It's your choices, it's your, um, it's your things you choose and you don't choose. It's the story that you can create. As he rightly said, it's not about what you can't do, it's about what you can do from here. And, and how it can inspire many different great stories. Right? Any great leader, any great movement has never ended. It still lives on. Every religion still lives on and it will live on until Humans exist until this planet exists. Uh, we are all books, a collection of stories. Each of us, if we look at ourselves as a book, we know what happens in the beginning, we know what happens in the end. What are the stories you choose to fill, the, fill your book with? Thank you.